We'll be heading into that as soon as it loads. And for anyone who might just be joining, this is a uh, match from week one of the Chobo Team League. The two teams are Team Unrivaled Gaming and Team Composite. And this is the the ninth set ace match. This is game two. The ace match is a best of three. All the other ones are best of one. And this week the ace match actually did make the difference as our current score is four to four. So oh, this really is an ace match. And as you see, the players are hoping for another game like the last one because the last one was a great game and it really was. As it was a long, long game, but it was not long and drawn out. It was a long game that was constantly full of action, great play from both players as we might expect out of our Diamond League players. Our Diamond League is the highest players within the Trovo Team League, which is a league for players between all the way from bronze up to diamond. <laughs> yeah, talking about, uh, about how much Corn Muscles is going to like casting that game. Corn Muscles is uh, one of our main casters at the Chobo Team League. I'm, I'm just a community caster, but I'm a bit of a prolific community caster as I literally plan on casting every game if I can pull it off. Because after all, I find ones like that that are more fun to watch and cast than just about anything else. I'd rather do that than a lot of pro games I've seen. Anyway, so, spawning in the upper right, after all of my conversation, we have uh, playing as I Dream of Doge for Team Unrivaled Gaming. This is Fox, at least by the name we know him in Chobo Team League. So, spawning in the lower left, we have Flubs for Team Composite, is our yellow Zerg. So, uh, pretty typical builds going down so far. We have, uh, looks like a Reaper opening out of Fox, or I Dream of Doge. Such a great name, I Dream of Doge. And a typical hatch first out of Flubs. So, pretty much the same openings we saw last time. Except that this is, this is in fact, a two-player map, so they know where they are. Moderately long rush distance. Still one of the shortest rush distances currently in our map pool, though. The current current map pool generally doesn't have very many really short rush distance maps. It's mostly Polar Night for really short rush distance anymore. Anyway, so the first overlords are arriving here at Fox's Natural, seeing that there's no second base yet. Which is not that much of a surprise to anyone. First Reaper is just about to pop up for Fox. And there it is. That first Reaper is going to be the first scouting he has as well, coming across the map to see that we've got a gasless opener with, well, lots of drones, lots and lots of drones, a few queens, lots and lots of drones. Looks like we got a few early Zerglings on the way, they're just about to finish to be able to chase around this Reaper. The Reaper does get one kill already, first blood, and it gets a second kill before the or you can go hide on the extractor. Also, it gets one of the Zerglings that just popped out for free. It takes actually maybe one hit from the Zergling, but now he's starting to get hemmed in by these Zerglings. He does get that second Zergling, but he's he's probably going to have to run pretty soon as the Queen just popped out down here. Yep. Chooses that time to run. Very smart choice. Doesn't really get much scouting info, but there wasn't really much to scout. In fact, the main thing to scout was that there isn't any gas yet. But he actually didn't get up into the main base to scout. However, there's two more Reapers. Looks like we're going for some pretty heavy Reaper play. Another Reaper on the way back home for Foxes. These three Reapers come up, but these three Reapers will be able to take down this Queen if they do, if they try. One Reaper... Oh, no Reapers down yet. This Queen just about dead. The three Reapers run off, but... Their health's going to regen a lot faster than that queen's is. That queen actually uh, choosing to go down into the natural with a new fresh queen being made in the main. And Flub's continuing to go mass queens early on. That's actually something I like out of him. I've seen him use a lot of queens in his play. That first queen does go down as now five reapers arrive. There's two more reapers on the way. Looks like we're gonna, just going to see mass reaper out of Fox. You don't see that very often, but it's going to work out very well against this gasless style, because in a gasless style, there's just nothing that can really catch Reapers. Looks like one Reaper might go down to this Queen, but yeah, it does. But they're going to get the Queen in exchange. 
There's still three Reapers at the front. Still two more on the way a, across the field and two more on the way out of the racks. So we're just seeing a whole lot of Reapers and that's actually working out really well for Fox. Just keeps taking down queen after queen after queen. There's another queen gone down. And there's only these two queens left to defend pretty much. Pretty good Reaper Micro sending those Reapers back before any of them die. Don't quite get that queen and uh, have to wait a bit, but there's more Reapers coming across. So while these Reapers heal up, their friends are going to join up and they're probably going to go in and get more queens. He has added a spine crawler down at the natural, but no spine crawler still at the main and these reapers are just going to continue to come in and snipe queens. If you have enough reapers to snipe queens and there's no gas, that's going to work out pretty well. Now these reapers do run into that spine crawler a little, but they're able to snipe one queen. And they back off, off and go back into the main as the spine crawler takes one more jab at one of them, but they're going to continue to be able to snipe queens. Now one reaper is lost here. In fact, another Reaper goes down, the Micro being not quite as good as it was, the actually damaged Queen being Micro back well. But, it looks like the Reapers are going to have a little bit too much here. They get the damaged Queen, and it looks like they're going to get the other Queen, which they've mostly taken down as well. Yep, two more Queens for all these Reapers. That's a ton of Zerglings, but Reapers are faster than Zerglings, and there's no speed because there was no gas. The speed is now on the way because the gas was taken. In fact, it's mostly done, but it's not quite done yet. This Reaper Harass isn't quite done, but when the speed finishes, they're finally going to be able to take out those Reapers. But, man, these Reapers have just done a ton of damage. Looks like they might get yet another Queen. No, the Queen being microed back and the Speedling's enough to hem in the Reapers and chase them down. They, they almost get the Surround. They do get one of the Reapers, but there's still two Reapers alive after all that. And upon seeing the Speedlings come out, out uh, Flibs has switched into Marine production, got Stim on the way, and a ton of Marines already pretty much done. And Flubs may have a little bit more supply, but that was some really effective harass from Fox. Once again, just really good play out of both of these players. I look forward to casting these players more in the future because, man, these, these have been some great games. The Reaper's still tooling around the map. Speedling's trying to chase him down. They do get the one Ling that was holding the watchtower and then jump back down to dodge the Lings. Take the other watchtower for the moment to watch the Lings run up after them. The Lings actually can't see them due to the grass at first, and they actually nearly get nearly get one of them down, but they escape once more. And uh, those all that Reaper Micro did very good at at uh, keeping Flubs busy while these Marines are now starting to come out to take this Watchtower. That is a pretty good flock of Marines. Starport now on the way for our Terran player. Stim about to finish. Plus one, plus one on the way. Plus one, plus one about three quarters of the way done for our Zerg player. So our Zerg player is going to have a mild upgrade advantage. But our Terran player does now have Stim available. And is uh, possibly going to use that Stim timing push to take down his third base. Yep, stimming forward to the third base. Looks like that third base is probably going to fall before these speedlings can come in to try to do something about these marines. There's actually probably just too many marines for that number of speedlings to deal with. No banelings, and in fact, no baneling nest yet. Baneling nest only just now finishing for our Zerg player. Notably late, late to gas and baneling nest timing for our Zerg player again. As the, these marines finally are starting to go down, but trading extremely well, taking down so many Zerglings for their their number. I mean, look at the resources lost tab there. It's, you know, 1,500 in favor of our Terran player. These Zerglings taking down the rocks there. And at the same time, our Terran player is taking a third. So, our Terran player significantly ahead, now being on three bases to two and one building. 
And that's a Terran player, a base ahead of a Zerg. Not so good for the Zerg. But it looks like we might actually see exactly what uh, Fox hoped for. Another great game like the game before, but with him winning. As he uh, now stims in with these Marines to take down a few drones that were distance mining from that third base. Gets a few Zerglings. Uh, Banelings now being morphed in, but good stutter to other steps seems to be taking down... Oh, that was a good Baneling hit. Really nice Baneling hit there for Flubs taking down most of these Marines and... Zerglings being just a little stronger than the Marines and taking down the rest, but only with two Zerglings remaining. That was about as close as it gets, folks. But Marines still being streamed across the map. Just Marines. Marines, Marines, Marines. And uh, in the meantime, a Spire just about done for Flubs. So he's just about to have Mutilus come out, but all Mutilus really doing a Marine on, on Zergling battle is make it so the medevacs aren't completely uncontested. Looks like these marines may cancel his third base again. Queen coming out to try to help out. That's a lot of banelings! The banelings and the zerglings getting around the marines and taking down only one or two marines before the rest of them are picked up into the medevac. Definitely a nice escape there for those marines. But a number of marines again coming to try to attack this third base. Zerglings being streamed up the map towards the Terran base. I guess things kind of going on everywhere. We still have that drop hanging out here about to go into the main. We have Zerglings uh, kind of fending off, off Marines over here. Zerglings running into the third base of our Terran player, which has been lifted in anticipation because he has no way to defend it, but Zerglings can't attack the air. A good Widow Mine hit took down a number of those Zerglings poking around at the front of the base. In the meantime, the Terran is dropping and looks like he's going to get the Spire. Yeah, Spire has been sniped. Right, so there's only three There's only three Mutalisks there. I think that may be all the Mutalisks on the field. Yep, that three is all he's going to have for quite a while. So he's going to have to rely on just Zerglings and Banelings to deal with these Marines and their Medivacs and these three all-important Mutalisks. Now, these three Mutalisks might get this Medivac... And that's exactly what their purpose has got to be, just to try to get medevac. But no, the medevac escapes getting under those marines, and those three mutalisks aren't going to do anything against that number of marines. Now, our Zerg player does have a upgrade advantage at this point, 2-2 two, two versus the Terrans, 1-1. One, one. Neither either player researching a higher upgrade at this point. And our Terran player is just sending a pile of marines across. So oh, these Banelings getting pretty decent hits. Not the best, not the worst, but at the very least trading decently. But our Terran player continues to expand their lead with that uh, Widow Mine getting a good hit on that small Zerg army. And we're going to see a number of Mutalisks pop out for our Zerg player as that Spire completes. You can see he's got a very significant bank and he's obviously waiting for that Spire to complete. Um, no, actually he's uh, morphing in a number of Banelings as well. And we just see three Mutalisks coming out. Possibly short of Larva, considering he does not have any macro hatches and only has the two bases and the third one just keeps getting cancelled. We do have an Overlord dropping creep at the uh, Terran's usual third slash fourth base location. Nice, nice pickup to save all these marines from all those banelings as they cancel the third yet again. The Zerg player just being forced to continually play on two base versus our Terran's three base. So it's looking a whole lot better for our Terran player at this point. Finally able to get a half decent muta flock. I think about ten mutas flying up into the Terran base to start the typical muta harass. Number of widow mines running around. The mutas actually get a widow mine for free and a medevac that was loaded. That's a pretty good pickup for our Zerg player. Getting a loaded medevac. But our Terran player uh, moving moving down towards creep. Now the creep spread also hasn't been very good with it. the Terran player being so dominant so far this game. 
Those Widow Mines are picked off, not before one of them going off on those Mutas taking one down and taking the rest of them a little bit lower in health. These missile turrets doing some work, taking down a few Mutas, and the Marines able to push back the Mutas, but Mutas do get a few SCV kills while they were there. So workers killed at uh, 8 for our Zerg player. Whereas during the various times the third has been sniped, our Terran player's taken down 16. Drop squad hanging out over there, getting ready to drop. Not quite in the view of these overlords hanging out over the possible fourth base location for flubs. They are actually going to pick up and do a drop at the same time these mutas are once again being pushed back by marines at our Terran's third. So it looks like Fox is going to go with this drop, but wow, that's a lot of banelings in position. Picked most everything back up. A lot of the banelings going off on one marauder, though. That's a pretty good exchange. Nice splitting. Not quite perfect splitting, but these banelings just kind of rolling around among the marines and literally one marine taken down for like six banelings. That was not a very good exchange, allowing this drop squad to be really effective. They might even get the base. Valera may go down here. These mutas coming in are probably going to be enough to clean this up, but... They might get a few mutas on their way. Yeah, the mutas have absolutely no upgrades versus 2-2 two -two marines. So a number of mutas falling to these marines before the medevacs and everything gets taken out. So the full drop gets taken out, but at the cost of a number of mutalisks and... Uh, it brings our current Mutalisk flock. It's now back up to 13 as three more have spawned, but he continues to keep the Mutalisk count low. Now up to 43 Marines and pretty much going almost entirely Marines with a few Widow Mines. 3-3, three, three, he about three quarters of the way done for our Terran player. Zerg player has not yet morphed his... Uh, Lair into a hive, and so it's pretty far away from getting that 3 3. Plus one flyer attack, though, on the way for flubs. As Fox starts building a few more missile turrets. So, uh, looks like we got a bit of a Zergling run by here. The uh, gate being left down, and a number of Zerglings getting into the base, getting a few workers before getting cleaned up by these Marines. No, actually, uh, might have Baneling busted because uh, the, the wall is missing. In the meantime, I'm the, a number of other Zerglings are now attacking the third. They haven't really gotten many worker kills yet, but, but they may well get some. However, these Marines are enough to clean up this attack, so... A few attacks, not really extremely effective for flubs there. Worker count being 49 SCVs to 36. X drones. I mean, Terran is just doing so much better economy-wise at this point, and with the resources loss also being being in their favor, our Terran player is just in a much better position. These Marines are getting pretty overstimmed. Only one medevac trying to heal them all. Looks like they're going to go down really fast when these banelings arrive. Yeah, it was a bit of an overstim there. You did get a number of mutalisks for it, though. Our uh, mutalisk flock back down to six, actually. So most of the mutas actually were taken down as probably a worthy trade. Even with having lost all those marines. And Zerglings run right into this base again. What am I in taking out four or five of them, but looks like they're going to get some good worker kills before the marines can get over here. No, they're actually just going to choose to engage age to the marines. Oh, I got one or two workers there. And now finally choosing to make a bunker to close that wall. I've been reminded by that little Zerdling run by. Adding on a few more barracks. Three more. With Eleven Marines currently in production. Continuing to up his Marine production. Now up almost 50 supply. Getting a Baneling for free. Taking down this creep. Looks like Fox is doing a heck of a job right now. However, we have an attack going on down here. Zergling run by once more. They actually uh, 
At the very least, the workers were pulled. Probably got a number of worker kills, I'd wager. Let's uh, open up that tab. Yes. Yes, the Zerg player now uh, actually with more worker kills than the Terran player. That Zergling run by really doing work, and most of them even escaping before the Marines show up. That was a heck of a run by. So both players continuing to play really well, but our Terran is a significant lead. His Marines are now 3-3. No 2-2 two -two on the way, or, you know, even close to on the way, with no hive for our Zerg players to content to stay on that lair tech. Widow Mines continuing to be effective for our Terran. Scanning and seeing that the Mutalisks are where he thought they were. Widow Mine uh, getting into position, but not quite fast enough to go off with the overseer going around with those mutalisks so get a widow mine for free but that's all they're going to get for the moment so our Zerg, between this our Zerg player has finally finally secured his third after it being sniped about what five six times looks like you're going to get some free widow mines Yep, uh, three free Widow Mines donated to the more Mutalisks one, but a few Mutalisks going down when the Marines catch up with them. Those, are mar those Marines are as good as Marines get, and uh, they're pretty beefy compared to these Mutalisks. They don't get it anymore, though, uh, losing a few Marines for free that were separated from the rest of the pack. But uh, Zerglings and Banelings coming in, as well as these Mutalists to take down Medivacs, and as it is Raw Marines, there's nothing to tank the Baneling hits. Splitting is decent, but not as good as it might be, as the Banelings do work. However, there was enough splitting that all the Mutalists went down, and, uh, well, not quite all of them, but close enough. More and more Mutalists being rallied across the, uh, Fox trying to take a fourth base, finding the place he was going, covered in creep, and uh, now being uh, harassed by the four remaining mutalisks. So there just aren't that many on the map. Four more on the way, but most of the mutalisks keep being taken out by our Terran player and uh, not being able to maintain a healthy mutalisk flock or use them for much harassment. However, another Zergling run by into this third base, forcing the SCVs to be pulled, getting a few free SCV kills, taking out the missile turrets. Once again, just no defense at this third base. A few Marines coming in and the Zerglings running off, and the Zerglings actually pretty much getting out. A few of them dying from the extended range of that bunker on their way down, but... Zerglings still being pretty effective. Mutaflock now, I believe, up to just that 8 that I see. Let's check the units tab for a minute. Uh, 11, actually, so this one just two more finished. Two more on the way, so... More and more Mutalisks being made, but... I mean, our Terran has a 17 supply lead. Not so hot for a Zerg player. However, with the number of worker kills he's been succeeding at doing and uh, preventing a fourth base, is our, our Zerg player now up nine workers rather than being down and actually getting more and more worker kills so a, as he catches this transfer. Meta CV almost dying before being saved by the medevac and the troops arriving. And mute is at the same time. I'm attacking into this third, trying to start to work on marine aims and maybe some of that production. What am I having gone off on some zerglings? Thought the marines were arriving to push back those mutas. But rather than go all the way home, the Mutas actually uh, get a lucky catch and find some medevacs for free as they head back over to the uh, fourth that keeps trying to land over here. Do a little bit of damage before being pushed back by Marines once more. So this is becoming something of a, something of a fairly even game now that our uh, Zerg player has a good third base and is now getting up a fourth base as our Terran is also trying to secure a fourth. In the meantime, we have a little Terran force uh, foraying on the creek, not really getting that much done so far, but they do just pick up a few free mutalists that happen to fly into them. A few 
Marines taking down uh, um, yet another Mutalisk. As the rest of their friends come down, getting down another one. Doing very good at keeping that Mutalisk flock low, and with the Mutas with only that plus one air attack upgrade, there's just, you know... They may regen pretty quick, but they're still uh, pretty soft targets. Terran player doing a few scans to confirm the uh, new bases of the Zerk player, confirming that the third base is indeed up, the fourth base is indeed up here, and uh, starting to send some rings towards it. Taking down pretty much all the uh, banelings before they get there, and at that, and uh, having also lost his Mutalisk flock, our Zerg player GG's out, knowing that he can't hold the fourth and that he needs to.